Ciao, guys, and welcome Hi. to another episode of the Personal PR Show. And today we're here with Monica, Monica Müller from Zurich, based in Zurich, but originally from mm -hmm. England. And Monica is a personal stylist. This is amazing because this is so relevant for personal PR and personal branding. This is amazing. Thank you so much, Monica, for making the time and welcome. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me on here. We really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you also for making the time because this is such a relevant topic for mm -hmm. uh, anybody in personal PR, and which of course entails personal branding among other items. So um, maybe should we just talk about, to set a context, should we maybe just introduce you? Because we know that you're a personal stylist, but there's so much more to know about you. And one of the things is that you work not only with personal style, but also with personal branding. So who could be more qualified than you <laughs> to be here today? <laughs> <laughs> what should we know about you as an intro? Um, okay, well, um, yes, so I help women, um, high achieving women, um, amplify their personal brand through finding a signature style because I feel like when it comes to personal brand, the number one thing that is so relevant but isn't so much talked about is you. It's all about um, your outer appearance. That's the first thing people see um, when they first meet you. It's not what you say. It's not what you do. It's not, um, you know, your pitch. It's actually they're making first impressions basically based on your um, outer appearance. So you always want to make sure that you're giving the right, um, you're communicating the right message. Uh, and not only that, it's style is also to do with how you feel, because when you feel good about yourself, you naturally have more confidence. So that's what I do. I but I really help women because I know the women I work with are really, really busy. So I help women um, make style so easy. It doesn't need to be complicated, um, overwhelming, frustrating once you know how it can be really really easy and it's about finding that signature style but I'm also a mom so I'm very busy as well and having um having a business so um yeah for me it's just about um helping women find a true style so in the morning it's not a challenge it's that they know what to wear know how to mix and match pieces and they can walk out that door knowing that they feel good even before anyone tells them wow okay mm -hmm. so it's a, lot, it's a lot about aesthetics but at the same time it's a lot about about convenience as well and the practicalities of everyday life I love that yes because sometimes in order to reach like we have things in mind like particular mm -hmm. let's say outfits or particular styles in mind uh, but those are probably something that we can only let's say put into practice maybe during the weekend but not every day right <laughs> exactly yeah, I love most, cool. yeah most definitely I think one of the things um where women uh may like you may have tried working on your style and maybe you haven't got the end results. And where I find the biggest challenge women or the biggest mistake women make is that they start in the wrong place. They either start with thinking they have to declutter their wardrobe because stylists do talk about like decluttering wardrobe, but I believe this is not the starting point. Or they think, oh, um, you know, I don't like what I've got in my wardrobe. I need to go shopping. Again, that's like such a big mistake. It really actually starts with you. And a true style really is about like, um like it relating to your personality but most of all it fitting into your lifestyle I think the reason why women um have a wardrobe full of clothes but nothing to wear is because most of the clothes in there are probably impractical to their everyday lifestyle and um you know we might not we might have these glamorous pieces but our lifestyle might not every day be so glamorous but it's about finding that mix of having those um, nice pieces but being able to wear them for the, your daily activities and you know really shining in what you wear and creating an impact in your style as well yeah definitely oh I love this and we talked about <laughs> everyday life and everyday life these days especially for women entrepreneurs is a lot of zoom calls right mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, especially if you're working, um, if you have digital businesses, if we are coaching, we're consulting. Mm. So what do you think that really makes a difference in somebody's outfit when it comes to a Zoom call? Or let's say, 
maybe even just like we're doing now, we, we, we are talking on the personal PR show, maybe a show, you know, a podcast with a video element in it as well. It could be a Zoom call with a client. It could be a mastermind as well that you take mm-hmm. part of as a member or as a facilitator. So what do you think that really, really helps us really make an impact immediately, pretty straight away mm-hmm. in this dimension? Okay, so there's two parts to this. First is you have to remember that um, however you dress is going to impact you personally, like how you're feeling. So even though people can see waist upwards, um, you, I always tell my clients that they have to dress fully because it's about empowering you first, right? Like if you're wearing jogging bottoms on the second, on your bottom half, because no one can see and just got a nice top on on the um, top half, it's not really going to empower you or make you feel like the leader that you are. So my first thing is really dress head to toe, even if you're working at home. And that doesn't mean you have to wear um, you know, constricted clothes. There's so much out there now, like especially after the pandemic, that you can wear that is comfortable as well. But it makes you that's going to give you the confidence to perform, to um, be your best when you're doing these Zoom calls. The other thing is, I really um, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, the other thing is just making sure that how you're aesthetically dressed matches who you are and you are dressed better than everyone else on the grid especially if you're the speaker because you want people to pay attention to you um and another thing is also color like this is really underestimated like just knowing what the right colors are for you can be such can make such an impact and be powerful even if you're a little grid on a screen you know so those are a few tips there's a lot of other things you can do as well but I think the main thing is like dress head to toe um really think about what you're wearing if it it matches your personality and you want to stand out from the crowd as well so making sure that you do stand out for the right reasons you don't want to be stand out because you know it's really out there you want to stand out for the right reasons but also like another thing is you want to get spotted as well color is a really good way of doing that yes oh my god it's and here I am in a white shirt <laughs> it's the holiday it's the school holiday so um yeah so uh yeah but usually when when I am on scene calls um I would usually wear like color and um and also but white is one of the colors I love wearing it's in my color palette so yeah and yeah. Uh, what you're wearing is beautiful as well like it really stands out with your glasses it's all about having a signature style right and it's not just with your clothes it's it's the overall image what you're giving out oh thank you so much Monica. but actually <laughs> I feel very guilty of always wearing the, the same color, which is always black. I only wear black. I have l- lots of clothes in different shapes as well, but it's mm-hmm. always black. And um, and this is one of the reasons, just one, but this is one of the reasons why I decided to sign up with, for a program with you guys. So I'm going to ask myself. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. So basically guys, um, Monica will tell you about her program in a second, but what I would like to tell you now is that I signed up for it and I'm super, super excited. I will, I'm going to learn so much and you guys are going to be the witnesses of this transformation in the next time. <laughs> so Monica, what is the program going to be about? Okay. So this is a brand new program. I have done programs in the past, but this is really aimed at like female entrepreneurs, CEOs, executives in the corporate world who are struggling to create an impactful style and create a personal brand. Because like I said, nowadays, it is all about personal branding, right? If you want to stand out, the market is very saturated. There's so many people doing the same thing that you're doing. And it's about standing out, but standing out for the right reason and conveying the right message as well so this is really aimed at like high achieving women who really want to transform their style but make it easy and effortless and 
you know, getting dressed is something we do every day and it should empower us. It should make us feel good. We should like that image we're seeing, seeing in the mirror before we walk out the door, right? And this program is taking you step by step in creating a strong personal brand and a style presence. So it's really looking at how you want to turn up in the world and also like what industry you work at in, um, who is your audience? or um, even for corporations, who is your audience? Are you front facing? And it's about building a style that supports you, but it's also about looking at your physical characteristics. As much as, you know, we would love to wear whatever you want, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, if you feel like you want to wear a certain thing, then go ahead and wear it if it gives you confidence. But there's certain things, certain silhouettes that suit different body shapes, right? And, and we're all unique. So it's about putting a blueprint for you and um, a building on this and knowing what fits and flatters you, knowing what colors suit you and how to build a signature style. So looking at outfit formulas, how to make the most out of your wardrobe, what might potentially be missing in your wardrobe and really just um, transforming your style within five weeks. And within this program, the first time ever, I am also doing a wardrobe detox. So one week we will be going through our wardrobe as well. So. Well, this sounds super exhaustive and super um, holistic as well. Yeah. You know, yeah, personal stuff from so many different perspectives and is what makes your approach special. So I look forward to this. Oh my God, I'm so excited. We're starting next week, right, Monica? Yes, we're starting on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, but there's still time. If you want to join, there's still time until tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday, right? Saturday, mm -hmm. late, late afternoon or so, you will be able yep. to get in with Monica and um, ask her if uh, there's still space. Um, okay, awesome. And Monica, something that you said regarding this program and also about your work in general is that you work with women entrepreneurs and also with women CEOs, right? So, um, and another thing that you often say on your channels, which I really, really like, is that there's a direct correlation between personal style, like how much thought and, you know, um, yeah, let's say how much thought you put into personal style and, of course, the results that you achieve mm -hmm. is not just attention, but it's also the results. So good personal style, let's say. And on the other side, income, right? Mm -hmm. And impact. Yeah, most definitely. Right. For example, the salary that you get in in corporate or the, the income the you know that you will generate as a business owner, right? Yeah. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, because most definitely. So yeah. this isn't just me saying it, there's scientific evidence proof that when you pay attention to your appearance, you can have a salary increase of 20%. So that is quite significant. And if you think of that in one year, in five years, in 10 years, that, that is a compound effect, right? And, um, and also, it, when you look like um, a leader or um, look like, so if you're a coach, you show the transformation in yourself, People are looking for clues in you all the time in your appearance to see if they can, if you can help them or provide them with the solution. And this, especially for entrepreneurs, this is like such an easy way to get someone on board, like, you know, to get clients and um, get people to invest in you. They need to be believe you and trust you. Um, but also, like I said, there's lots of... Uh, like um, scientific evidence showing that just by your appearance alone you can you can increase your salary you can get that promotion it's because people see you differently as well so yeah I love wow and what would you say are um, um maybe two or three items that you can immediately think of that create this aura of let's say leadership and authority not that that, that I'm asking you to give it all away, of course, because it's in, this is your. What do you mean? Do you, what What do you mean? Say that again. Yeah, maybe something that we can um, shift or we can focus on in our personal style that you know creates this aura of authority and leadership mm -hmm. as well. Because it's very very important to um, to show this, right? For example, as a coach, of course, you have to be able yeah. to show that you can lead people through a transformation that of course mm. 
requires authority and leadership and so on. And this is something that we can express through our personal style as well. Not only, of course, like we have to have our competence when it comes to coaching. Yeah. But it's something that we can highlight also through our personal style. Yeah, so I I definitely think it's about looking at being the better version of yourself. How does that look like, you know? Um, because like what you touched on, competency, it's your style is going to show your competency and that you're credible and, you know, show gravitas as well. Um, and it's about dressing like that. What's going to show these values, these qualities through your clothes? But first of all, it really starts with you. Um, so my framework is looking at three things, and that's um, B, which is your personal branding, where, which is like finding a signature style that makes you stand out. Um, so if you look at a lot of successful women, they don't um, have like... Uh, they don't, I mean, they probably do have a lot of clothes, but if you look at their aesthetics, it's very similar. Like every time you see them pictured, like you will see that they're kind of silhouettes that they're choosing. It's very similar. And that's because it matches their personality. And that's called a signature style. It's not them wearing the same clothes, but the aesthetics are very similar. So if you look at Christine Lagarde, who, uh, do you know who Christine Lagarde is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you... If you look at her, like she's always in great, um, like navy suits or like black suits or, but you know, but she always looks very luxurious. But what makes a difference is she's always got these luxurious scarves on or like she's got an expensive French handbag or like, um, you know, wearing really nice jewelry. It's not about wearing expensive clothes, but that's what people notice about her. And it's like, and then they recognize that. It's um, and you'll see that with a lot of famous people, even like Meghan Markle, Victoria Beckham. If you look at them, I mean, there's more celebrities, um, but all of them have a certain aesthetic. Uh, so it's about finding your signature style. So that's my second pillar. And then the third pillar is really how to be impactful and influential with your style. So if you are a high achieving woman, you are always striving for success, right? You want to make it to the top of the career ladder or you want to, um, you know, um, have a successful business. And then it's about how do you, um, by using accessories, colors and other things how can you create a impactful image so when you walk in the room you people know like they want to know who you are and you already have that authority figure oh my god I love your answer because in the past I heard yes if you want to you know show authority on gravitas for example you have to make sure I'm not talking about me necessarily right now but you have to make sure that you're wearing a jacket for example because mm -hmm. you have that a certain structures to the shoulders and so on mm. or maybe wear glasses I'm already again I'm not talking precisely about myself necessarily but um yeah and what you've just told us is that it's not necessarily the case actually we can really show like if this impression of gravitas and influence and leadership mm. and authority even without a jacket and even without glasses for example I love that yeah most definitely it really is about personality and now nowadays um, there's an article I think in Forbes that said that it's to be a leader it's not now about power dressing it's really about dressing authentically um, that's the most important thing and this is why I begin with you your personal branding aspect of you, your style identity because it's finding out like what is it that makes you you Jessica what is it that you want to bring out and show your audience uh, and then we work from this because um yeah, now it's really about being authentic and it's really about people connecting with you. It's not how business was done in the, uh, you know, um, about 20 years ago. It's now about like um, direct consumers and like, you know, connecting with people is the no like and trust factor. So, yeah. Wow, I love this. Yes. And on this note, I do have another question, which is actually two questions in one. So, mm -hmm. uh, we talk about in this group, one of the things that we talk about is actually how to elevate your brand mm. in order to raise your fees, right? This is a direct consequence mm. of elevating your brand, one of the consequences. So when we raise our fees and we maybe we want to charge premium, then a lot of times we are, I've heard this from many people, that we are expected to actually 
um, look expensive when it comes to a personal style. So my first question to you would be, does it re do we really need to look expensive in order to charge premium, number one? And number two, if so, how can we look expensive? Maybe one or two, I don't know, hacks mm -hmm. that you would have. If it's the case, if it's the case, if you think that we need to look yeah. expensive. I think it depends what industry you're in as well. So say if you're in IT, you're teaching women on, um, I don't know, how to use a computer, I don't know, or how to use a certain program, right? It really, it really, really depends. I do have a lot of clients recently, actually, who have come to me because they want to um, charge more. And they want to up level their style. I do believe there's an element of up leveling your style, but it doesn't mean you have to look luxury, right? Um, it means about you up leveling, um, you taking your style up a notch compared to your audience, so you do stand out. It's going back to what I just what I said a few minutes ago. It really is about you um, standing out compared to everyone else. But like I said, it also depends on what um, what industry you're in. Like a lot of people who have recently come to me, they're business coaches. And a lot of these business coaches, yeah, the market is quite saturated. So if you want to charge high ticket offers, you have to look the part because, again, people need to believe that you can give them the transformation and you are the right person to um, provide them with the solution, you know. But looking luxury doesn't mean expensive clothes. You can easily do this with accessories. You can, and it's about having clothes that, even before looking at accessories, it's about having clothes that really fit and flatter you and suit your phys physical formation. I think that's the most um, way someone can look like already, like um, up level their style and look luxury. So. Um, having clothes that fit you well um, is is a game changer, definitely. definitely. And good quality clothes as well. But on Zoom, you can't necessarily see the quality. But when you're in person, I think that is where it really shows. But it's also about you. You know, if you're wearing something that's like a quite cheap, you're not going to feel like expensive, are you? You're not going to feel like you, you might have a bit of imposter syndrome charging people that like, 20,000 or something when you're not really spending money on yourself you've got that scarcity mindset as well so it's true absolutely oh my god I love the answer that you've just given is so clear <laughs> thank you so much Monica yeah it makes total sense and on this note I'd like to ask you a question that is a little bit of a personal one but it could mm -hmm. be it will be relevant for a lot of people here and it is so a lot of times when we think of, you just mentioned accessories, right? And some of the accessories that we can really invest in um, are bags, bags mm -hmm. and shoes, especially bags when we want to have them, you know, these access these pieces for, let's say, for the long term, I think. Because mm -hmm. um, probably shoes wear out a little bit more than bags, but who knows? But anyway, so... A lot of times, if you want to invest in a good bag, it will be leather. Now, I'm vegan. I eat vegan and I live vegan as well. I have lots and lots of leather, which I bought until a few years ago. And I'm certainly not going to throw it away, first of all, mm. because I respect animals who gave their life in order for me mm. you know, to have a leather bag and, 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 and boots and so on. So I'm not going to throw them away. But I've decided, I decided already three years ago that I'm not going to buy any leather anymore, which is not mm -hmm. easy. Days. But going back to the previous question that we discussed, do you think that we can look luxury even with vegan products? Most definitely, especially now there's so much good vegan products out there, so much. And they're so like in the past, they weren't very fashionable, right? It was always like this kind of bohemian and like kind of it wasn't it didn't look um, fashionable or uh, modern or contemporary. And now there's so many brands out there that are doing such a good job. So yes, most definitely. You don't need to, and look at Stella McCartney. Um, she's one of my favorite designers. She makes loads of like faux leather 
um, clothes. She has lovely bags um, and has, um, I've got a pair of shoes from her um, that are faux leather and they're so beautiful. So yes, you can definitely, definitely be, um, look fashionable, stylish um, with vegan products. Oh, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. And do you, by the way, do your clients ask, do you have more and more clients that are asking about vegan products? Yeah, I do. I have a few, not as many, but I have a few clients that um, have been um, really like, I want vegan products. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm so happy. And Great sustainable Britain. is also another big one. But being sustainable, I have to say, is a little bit challenging because there's different elements of sustainability. Um, so that I think is a little, I think the best way to be sustainable is wearing um, 100% of your wardrobe and investing in pieces that you can mix and match. Yes. Absolutely. And this is where we can talk about a capsule wardrobe as well. Is it, would you say that this is the right context? Yeah. So the thing is with capsule wardrobes, I have a bit of a, um, uh, I don't, even though on my website it says capsule, but we're changing all of that. Um, we capsule, I think sometimes like how a lot of it is um, portrayed on the internet or in books is that you have to have a certain number of pieces in your wardrobe. And I completely disagree with that. It's not about the number of pieces. You can have five pieces, you can have 10 pieces, you can have 200 pieces, as long as you wear your clothes. And it's about having a wardrobe that's cohesive that you can easily mix and match. And you know different ways of wearing things. You can dress something up. You can dress something down. You can like wear it in another way. You can style it differently, add accessories. And it's like creating different outfits with those um, few, with however many pieces. And it's about having those pieces that fit into your lifestyle. So you're wearing your clothes. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I think a capsule wardrobe should be but out there it's a lot like oh you should have 10 pieces or 20 pieces and that's the bit I don't agree with I think it, it doesn't matter as long as it's cohesive it matches your personality and you can mix and match and you wear your wardrobe you wear your wardrobe yeah yeah that's such an important one I'm very guilty of that <laughs> not wearing my wardrobe most of it and um and Monica may I ask you to share um, another anecdote from your uh, let's say first career which was about um, you were you were I mean is it true is it true of course I know that it's true you were working <laughs> for Harrods right I know that I remember that we were working for Harrods exactly what you were doing I don't remember what you were purchasing right yeah I was a luxury buyer yeah so mm -hmm. yes. exactly would you like because I've heard this story before. I know that you have so many anecdotes and it's super fascinating. It was fascinating when I heard it for the first time. It will be fascinating to hear it again. And I'm sure our audience would love to hear, you know, the behind the scenes of Harrods and uh, the great brands because you've worked for a lot of great brands. Mm. You work, Yeah, you've worked for, if you want to share anything, because I think that this is something that, you know, women are particularly interested about. I grew up, you know, always looking at fashion magazines. Yeah. I had so many subscriptions like to 12 mm -hmm. fashion magazines and this is how I grew up and I was dreaming of, be of being behind the scenes and it's something mm. that you live for years and years, and years. Um, what was it like to work for Harrods and such you know well, well you know well recognized brands yeah I mean I have to say working for Harrods and working for I worked also for Burberry it was the best experience in my life but it is a very cutthroat industry so you become strong you have to like become strong really quickly um but one of the stories I often share about Harrods is um if you watch Devil Wears Prada have you watched Devil Wears Prada yes. yeah so um Miranda Priestley that was my boss <laughs> it really was like that so mm -hmm. you whenever she entered the room you already felt intimidated she had this grand presence you know she wore like head to toe she was luxury all over and uh, exactly like Miranda Priestley and then she would look you up and down and um and then when she didn't like what you were wearing or didn't like like once she noticed chipped my nails were chipped and um she stared at them like longingly like looking at them and then looked straight up at me and you felt so guilty, um, like you felt like, oh my God, you had done something really, really bad. But it was, 
even though some people might be listening to this and thinking, oh my God, that's crazy. But you have to think it was part of the brand. You know, Harrods is one of the most luxurious stalls. So I could understand, but at the time you really did f- didn't feel so great about yourself. But one of the things I always remember her saying was, um, I remember my buyer had left and I had just started Harris and I was really, I was already burnt out within one month because I was doing a buyer's job, my job and everything. And, um, and I wasn't dressing up like to Harrods standards um, because I was just exhausted. And then she called me into the office and um, she kind of had a go at me. And then she goes, Monica, if you want to work here, you have to look the part and be the part. When you're going to suppliers meeting, you cannot be wearing that. She goes, you have to, um, you know, look on brand. And I always remember that because then when I did go to supplies, it really did help with my negotiation skills, like because it wasn't even though when she said it, it was very hurtful, but actually it helped because it actually gave me the confidence. I felt better in myself, like um, negotiating these prices. So I always remember that, like be the part and look the part. Yes. Wow. Which ties back to what we discussed a few minutes ago, a few questions yeah. ago. But yes, how we can actually bluntly said charge more. In yeah, our business. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God. I love all of this. Yes. So <laughs> guys, please understand you need to invest in your um in your um appearance, definitely with personal style and accessories, as we said. It's not just the clothes, but it's also the accessories. Yeah, yeah and definitely. I think it's not it's not like, you know, with style, I think people think that they need new clothes. So many times I found so many things in women's wardrobes that they just have left and don't know how to style it. And really, you can find you can look good in your what's already in your wardrobe. And maybe you might need to add a few missing bits, but it's not like an expensive thing. And what happens is women are making mistakes by going out and shopping and shopping rather than really learning how to dress for themselves, learning how to dress um you know learning what suits them rather than just spending money on clothes that you know they get bored of that doesn't suit them that they don't feel good in you know and I think it's something that people think oh well if I don't know um style I was never taught it or like I don't know how to dress so it doesn't matter but actually no one's born with style it's something you learn and it can and once you know it it can make your life so so easy so easy I love this and Monica I know that we are approaching the end of our conversation today we still have Mm -hmm. a few minutes or eight minutes and I have three more questions because I'm so excited I want to know the stuff for myself, but especially I want, you know, yeah. to uh, for us to uncover all of these um, golden nuggets for our mm-hmm. audience that are going to be conducive to their businesses and to, mm-hmm. to, to their business and reputation. So one of the things that I would wanted to ask you is how important, we've talked about, you know, personal style, so closing, we talked about mm-hmm. accessories as well. Um, what is the weight that we should put on the importance that we should give to, for example, hair and makeup and manicure? For example, I will out myself. I have no clue how to do my makeup. I've never really done it in my life. So is it important? Is it not important? Is hair more important? What would you say is the hierarchy if there is any? Okay, I don't think there's any hierarchy. It's the overall image. Everything is tied together. So I I do think like um if you're if you're in the public eye or like you know if you have clients and audience I do think all of it it plays a role right um but it doesn't but the thing is you need to make it simple for yourself easy for yourself and that's what I always say to a woman it shouldn't take you longer than 10 minutes to get ready in the morning you know um or um, top half an hour it shouldn't take you 10 it should take you between 10 to 30 minutes to get ready in the morning that includes your hair makeup and your clothes right um and if you're not someone who wears makeup it doesn't mean you have to pile it on but I do think like having just like concealer or like having a lip gloss on or mascara it does help because it it opens your eyes up it conceals any marks on your face it's just going to make you feel more confident and especially on zoom I think you do need a little bit of makeup but you look beautiful Jessica as as you are 
And with hair, hair can be the easiest way to change style. It's like what they say when women break up with their partners or go for a divorce, the first thing they do is go and get a haircut, right? Or change the color of their hair. And it can instantly like elevate your style as well. So I do think like hair is also um, an important factor as well for your overall self image. Um, and the other thing I wanted to add is like, your hair though shouldn't take you ages to do. There's so many things out there now. Like I have curly hair, but I straighten it. Um, and you know, I I I bought the Dyson to help me because it's just one less thing that <laughs> I have to rather than trying to keep straightening it and stuff. The Dyson, it just made it's expensive, but it made my life easier. So it's about finding things that are convenient. And it was a great investment because I use it every day. So the cost per um, I don't know what normally I say cost per wear, but cost per use is probably like 50p or 50 wrapping by now or something. No, the amount I use it. Yes, oh my God, I love that too. I bought it a few years ago and it's, it, it's so it's, it came in so handy. Yeah. yeah, when I had long hair, I had hair until, I don't know, here until like a oh, year ago. Wow. Yeah, I cut it short four times and it was getting shorter and shorter and shorter. I had it cut the last time two weeks ago and it's getting, sh I mm. want it even shorter, by the way. I so, love it like that, Jessica. <laughs> I was just going to say, I really, really like your hair like that. Thank you. No, but just to highlight that basically when we mm. go through big changes in our lives, transitions, yeah. then we have a haircut as women at yeah. least. I totally yeah. uh, support that. Yes. And Monica, another thing, so... Uh, we have two more questions to go. Another thing that I hear you talk about very often is that a lot you hear a lot of women say, oh, I'd love to invest in my personal style because I really see the benefit to that. And there are many, but I'm going to wait for six months because I need to lose, I don't know, 10 kilos, five kilos, whatever. Right. So what is your response to this? <laughs> okay. I hear that a lot from women. And my response is, um, Basically, when they come back, they all majority of them do come back, but they're exactly, if not worse, we're um, in the same situation. Um, they haven't lost the weight. They may have put on more weight. And in the meantime, they've missed out on so many opportunities, you know, like so many times they said no to being in a photo. So many times they said, no, I'm not going to go to that networking event because I have nothing to wear. So many, so many times they felt um, overwhelmed or anxious because they've got an important occasion to go to and they don't know what to wear. So they rush out and spend money, but for an item they're only going to wear once, but still don't feel amazing in it. And what I've noticed, the women who do actually come, regardless of their way, it makes such a change in their life because they learn how to dress for their body. Like, look at some of the um, actresses in Hollywood. So Hollywood is such a cutthroat industry when it comes to your appearance. But there are a lot of, like, plus-size women in there who dress amazingly well and who are confident. They're not letting their weight define them. Mm. And, you know, and so... This is like the thing that women think I have to be a certain weight to um, look good. And this is like false. The only thing you need to be is healthy, you know. And yeah, I understand like we want to be a certain, um, you know, maybe we've gained weight and we want to lose some of it. I understand because I've been there myself, you know, and um, I get that. But the thing is to help you lose the weight you still want to like that reflection you're seeing in the mirror and what I've noticed is women who work on themselves or even get a few nice clothes and know how to dress for their body tend to then look um work towards like their health goals like will work will help it, it helps them lose uh, in some cases it's helped them lose weight as well because they're liking the way they're seeing themselves so therefore they're careful with what they're eating they're like exercising and yeah it has it has a like knock-on effect as well oh my god this is amazing yes so it's one more reason to start working on your personal style you will maybe you will lose weight <laughs> Exactly. yeah I can't guarantee that but it has happened to some of my clients in the past because then they they're liking what they see they want to go out they want to like you know um 
be have a different lifestyle so then they start working towards it and it's that like I talk about the be do and have a lot as well so you know what people tend to do is they work on that framework backwards like have do be like I have to lose weight in order to look good but actually you have to be that person first you have to embody it so by just wearing nice clothes you are already embodying the best version of yourself oh my god I love this and embodiment is one of the things that we talk about all the time here on this channel yeah. because, because this is how you look credible as well in another exactly. context if you can show that you achieve the results for yourself that you are helping people to to achieve then actually yeah. this is this is what generates trust of course exactly. and I love that yeah. thank you it's a you. Yeah, yeah, it's about having the identity, right? You have to have the identity first. It's not about, um, I think where women think that they need to do, 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 it's really about embodying the identity first and then it helps you in, you know, in your behavior and in your habits as well. Totally. Oh my God, I love this. Oh, Monica, we could talk for hours now. <laughs> I know, I know. So please, promise and I've got one more question by the way but please promise uh that you will come back to the show to the personal PR show, I please. will I will definitely I will <laughs> we'll organize a day and then um we'll we'll do it for sure do you know what we you could even come back after the five-week program that we're oh, going to yeah. what do you think yeah yeah that would be amazing let's do that okay oh awesome to chat and she will arrange it that is okay. great Monica, the last question that I would like to ask you is actually a question that I ask every single guest that we have here on the Personal PR Show. And the answers are always different. So let's mm -hmm. hear what your answer is. So what is something that I haven't asked you in the past, you know, 47 minutes, but I should have asked you? Mm, oh, gosh, no, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> um, what should you have asked me? Um... <laughs> yeah, um, because I asked a lot of questions that's true in different areas as well of your profession and your life I know but maybe something that you would like to share with us without even you know saying the the, the question you, just the answer straight to the answer what is something that we should know about you we should talk about last in our interview today um how how did I get into how did I get into personal styling so Monica how did you get into personal styling <laughs> well I went through even though I had worked um, many years in the fashion industry actually most of my life in the fashion industry I actually was struggling with my style when I moved to Switzerland and had my first baby and I went through my own personal styling journey and that's how I became a personal stylist Wow. And I'm sure that you have a proper hero's journey that you created um, to tell this story. Oh, my God. So challenge, choice and outcome. We <laughs> see the outcome. Like the outcome is amazing. It's an embodiment and it's a mission in the world that you mm -hmm. have today. Right? Exactly. Wow. And about the details of your personal, uh, you know, um, of your hero's journey, maybe we can talk about next time. Yeah, yeah that would yeah. be really good. Yes. Yes. Awesome. I'll make a note of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, and for now, Monica, thank you so much for making the time. This has been amazing, priceless. Thank it's been you. so much value for every single one of us. And I really look forward to, you know, embarking on this journey with you in the next five weeks. And guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sure to, um, to really share week by week how I am transforming with Monica. You yeah, I can't fun. wait. I really can't wait. Maybe we'll see you in some color, Jessica. <laughs> but I need to be shot to go shopping though. Yeah. <laughs> like <a> two <laughs> <laughs> All right, Monica, thank you so okay, much. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So um, shall I post the link in the group or for anyone who wants to join this? still a few spots um i am also offering a color consultation as a fast bonus but there's only two spots for that um jessica i didn't reply i didn't say to you you've got one of the color consultations as well so there's two more spots so yeah so i'll just um put the link in the group yeah yes please absolutely okay absolutely. perfect yeah you can um so chair tomorrow is going to create because right now she's sleeping she's in the philippines okay. Marsha will create a post like with a caption with a proper caption and all of your okay. links 
for this particular recording. But today already, you can make a post about okay. your program. So then we have two posts about um, okay. you you and then about the program as well okay perfect okay great thank you jessica so much thank you thank you monica and i will see you very very soon yes definitely all right so guys uh thank you so much for joining us today and i will see you at the next episode of the personal pr show which is in about nine minutes <laughs> oh wow okay bye exactly. bye bye take care bye thank you monica bye guys talk to you in a bit